Hello guys and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, I wanted to see if I could start making some kind of a Hall of Fame. I like the idea of just having, you know, these rockets and capsules that you've been taking into orbit, taking to all these nice places and then just, instead of recovering them, just place them somewhere nice for you to enjoy seeing your kind of trophies and such so that's what I uh, plan on doing in this video in the beginning you saw me make some kind of a rover assembly um, the wheels I used were not the best wheels to use as will become apparent a little bit later anyway that were the only wheels that were available to me at the time so I had to make do that's why I also placed so many of them and I also had to bring a whole lot of repair kits as well because they will break. Anyway, the module that I'm about to recover this time uh, is I think one of the first modules, crew modules, I sent to Minmus, if I remember correctly, with uh, a lot of, um, well, what are they called, science storage pods, I believe. So there's a lot of science on board and um, yeah that made it a little bit trickier to perform this mission because I had to have uh, enough Kerbals to store all the data in. Um, yeah this video is going to take a little bit longer than I would have liked because it took me way more tries than I care to admit to get this module back. So now you can see we're on the final approach, the landing actually went quite smooth to say so myself one of the well things that went best about this mission uh, so that says something but uh, yeah a lot of things went really really wrong during this mission um, it could have restarted but I thought you know what let's just go with what we have and you know see if we can just fix it so anyway We've arrived and now it's time to unload our rover and the idea is that the um, rover will connect with the module through a docking port which we will be placing uh, with one of our engineers. However, yes, our first obstacle will be quite apparent in just a moment because there's no docking port. So while I scramble to find the docking port that I should have brought with me, it's not there. So, we need to bring in a docking port. And I'm not that bad at building rockets, but I, yeah, this took me way, way more tries than I care to admit again. Yeah. Alright, let's see if we can't do this to the right way. So this was one of the attempts that I almost managed to continue. As you can see, I tried to be a little skillful and actually catch the docking port, which I gracefully managed to do so. However, you see what's inside there? It's the parachute. It's not the docking port. Apparently, I had some issues with my staging, wrong order, yada yada yada. Anyway, we're going to do this again one more time. This time I corrected the staging so that, there you go, docking port should be eject together with a parachute and we'll be able to climb into our nice little cargo plane right here and drive over to the docking port and hopefully get you again. That would be nice. A little explosion there in the background. So yeah. As you can see, I think, can you see that around here? Yeah, probably. The docking port is still attached to the parachute part, which is nice. It's kind of cool trying to catch these parts in, uh, in midair. I have to say this was the first, first try on this attempt at least, so there's that. Anyway, just double checking that we have the docking port in there and as you can see, yes we do. Perfect. That means we can continue on. 
Now the next thing we're going to do is attach the docking port to the crew module and then we can position our rover in such a way that we can couple them together. It's a bit tricky at times but eh, you know we can just force it to, to connect. Um, yeah, one of the legs there was accidentally, I don't know, moved during the uh, construction so I had to place it back. Um, Anyway, love the animation of it lifting up this, this crew module without tipping over. And the, uh, the black and the blader shield is also pretty cool to, to see. Yeah, what you saw me do right there was just to lower the, the um, plane a little bit because it didn't have enough energy to get in. Uh, wheels weren't strong enough or whatever. It would just break. So I had to lower the, the shuttle and, you know, just wiggle it a little bit back and forth to get it in and the ramp, I had to shift it up and down just a little bit to get it inside and eventually managed to get it work. But again, as I said before, this took me way more tries than I care to admit. As you can see here, I don't think you can see it right there, but the wheels, they, they broke a couple of times. Yeah, I had to uh, enable this same vessel interaction, I think it's called, because um, otherwise it would just clip right through. And yeah, that's not something you want. But the thing I had most of the problems with in the beginning was, as you can see right here, it, it just wouldn't move. The capture would just stay in place. It would. It looks like it has been rotating now, but it's not. It's still fixed in place. It just doesn't want to go anywhere. It just keeps floating. Eventually I found out I had to use just physical time warp, just activate it and then deactivate it and then it would sort itself out, but yeah. And as for the loading as well, yeah, that did not go as smoothly as I managed to show. Either it, it didn't fit, the, the cargo bay wasn't open, or yeah, I tried to nudge it in and then this happened multiple times. Here I thought, okay, you know what, let's take it easy, small steps, close it. I thought, yes, this is it. But then, for some reason, you know, still didn't want to work. Anyway, um, yeah, even with the same vessel interaction turned on, I do need to secure this module in place because it's pretty wobbly. I don't want to have any more explosions that we already had. Um, now we can just set our course for the KSC and actually we're not going to the KSC, we're going to the, the um, island runway, I think it's called, yeah. Um, I don't know, because there's a nice hangar there, uh, I once had to land my shuttle there because I totally planned to overshoot the KSC, so that's where the Hall of Fame going to start so yeah um, I did find out later that I cannot use the runway anymore or I can't start on the runway because apparently the game thinks it's blocked by one of the modules in these hangars which is weird but you know what do you do uh, so yeah arriving here um, all looked well uh, you no, know, we just had to decouple the uh, the rover to get it out. But again, there was something going wrong. As you can see me doing right here, I checked to make sure that the batteries in the rover were not depleted because yes, they were depleted. I undocked it and there was no charge. So nothing else I could do than to do a quick reload and yeah. Another thing, the wheels, they just kept on breaking. First time I tried, or I actually repaired the wheels while the rover was still in the cargo bay. It wasn't the right choice because then it got it out of the, the plane and they broke again and it didn't have any repair kits. So yeah, I thought, you know what, let's just reload and keep the broken wheels on and repair them when we're outside. So yeah, now we're just placing it somewhere nice in the, in the hall and didn't have any problems with the, the botched, I don't know what you call it struts that I have on the rover on the rear uh, because it's one uh, it's one vehicle so they don't interact with each other but as soon as I undock 
yes, that's that's happens. So it it was stuck. I had to maneuver a little bit. Again, took me way more time than I would have wanted it to. But anyway, now we're finally here in the hangar. Um, get the rover back in the plane. That was that difficult without the, the load. Again, had to enable the same vessel interaction. And then for some reason, when quick loading back in again, I don't know which one the this is. I think it was Jebediah and Bill. They were spawned on, si on top of the hangar. So what are you going to do? Well, you can base jump off of it is what we can do. True Kerbal fashion. It does look like they hit the ground a little bit faster than looked comfortable but yeah they they survived so I think all should be good so anyway here you can see all of the science storage units or whatever they're called um, I think there were around six of them five I think including the cockpit so I had to have six unique Kerbals to take all the science with me uh, because yeah I am maybe a little bit of a completionist because I wanted to you know get the full science of all the experiments and apparently you can do the experiments more than once and sometimes even six or seven times so yeah you're gonna need a lot of these uh, sort of storage uh, storage units uh, and you can't store multiple experiments in the same pod so I wanted to send all these Kerbals back home together with Jebediah and the plane but yeah that's not possible um, of all the duplicate science experiments and I had not unlocked the command seats yet so yeah they're gonna be left there and we'll pretend that they are actually inside of the plane and fly back to the KSC and then we're just gonna recover the Kerbals individually one by one to hopefully get the full science so we don't have to do all these experiments again I do notice that the camera work is a bit janky, I apologize for that. Uh, I have to remember that I'm, of course, recording this in one time speed. And, and during editing, it just takes way too much time otherwise, so I have to speed things up. And when you move the camera around too much, you, you get stuff like this. And that's, I don't think that's too comfortable to watch. That. So next time I'm going to have to remember to take it easy on the, the camera work. Anyway, we're heading for the KSC now. Doing a final approach from within the cockpit. Let me try if I could land it this way. I mean, I landed it, but let's... Yeah, let's keep it at that. I mean, we made it, so... They say every landing you can walk away from is a successful one, so... In that sense, this was a successful landing. Yeah, now in true fashion of this channel, I try to park the plane right in front of the space plane hangar. There we go. Now all we have to do is recover all the good, good science stuff. Which is around 2,000-ish here. Yeah, still more to come. So yeah, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, sticking around till the end if you did. Leave a like if you liked it, and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Thank you, and goodbye.